Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this really cool little foldable drone by VK. It's a VK330. This is a really fantastic little inexpensive line of sight flyer. There's no camera or anything on it. It just has a little LED, white LED here in the nose. But it's really, really nice. Let's go ahead and open up the arms here so you guys can see what it looks like here. It's really compact, folded, and even when it's completely with all the arms extended, it still looks, you know, it looks great, and it's, it's really, really tiny. Again, it has a white LED in the nose. It's got blue eyes here that light up. So you have white and blue for the orientation in the front. Then you have three, uh, excuse me, two red lights here that are on the rear. So you can, really helps maintain orientation. It's also direct drive, so the props are being driven right by the, uh, the motor there so you know it's direct driven off the motor there's no gears so it's really quiet and that's a really powerful setup if the motors can you know provide an frpm which these do it's really really uh really really fast and fun little quadcopter here's your on and off switch here on the side it comes with two batteries one of them i already got you know in the uh in the quadcopter itself as you can see here just go ahead and snap it in there and uh, away you go. This drone is also a hand uh, toss or a throw and go. So you can throw this in the air and it'll, it'll, it'll automatically start the motors. Um, you can also, there's several ways of taking off. That's actually the cool one. This drone is really similar to the Broad, uh, I think it's a Broadstream S9 or something like that. But I don't think that one has a throw and go like this little guy has. Here is the extra battery here. And this is his charging cradle. It has a dual charging cradle. And it's powered off a of micro USB. And that cable is in the bag over here on the, on the table. And uh, yeah, it takes a little while to charge these up, maybe uh, 45 minutes or so. Um, the flight time advertised on this drone, um, well actually not advertised, actually what I got on this, um, you know, around nine minutes I think eight to nine is pretty common um, I, um, eight if you're flying outdoors nine indoors because this drone can be flown both indoors and out that's why I'm kind of giving you two different flight times I mean I got around uh, nine minutes here flying inside I didn't uh, check my I already did a flight review in this out in my garage and I flew it some outdoors uh, and then back into the garage but I was able to fly it more aggressively outside than in the house so I expect the flight time will be less, but I don't know exactly just yet what that flight time is. But it'll be, I'll try to remember to include that here at the end of the video in the flight review and what the flight time I got in a flight review was. But I got nine minutes indoors with about 45 second to a minute LVC, but the LVC was shorter outdoors, I think, because I was flying it more aggressively in the LVC. This battery is a, has it on here, I'm trying to look off camera to see what it is, a 200 there we go, 250 milliamp hour lithium ion, uh, excuse me, LiPo battery. So again, you get two of these with it and uh, you get quite a nice flight time between the two of them. Um, even outdoors, like I said, it flies really, really well outdoors. Here is the bag of goodies, your USB, micro USB charging cable, um, a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, I think there's, a, there's some extra screws in there, a prop removal tool here if you need to help pulling the props off and you get not four but you get eight you get eight extra propellers that's nice um, because you know you might throw a prop on one of these in fact i threw one another day and in test flight and i actually threw a prop in the actual flight review i was able to find it it was laying right in front of me but it's nice that they included so many extra propellers that's a really nice bonus along with the extra battery and you have prop guards i didn't use the prop guards obviously if you install these you're going to reduce the flight time you know by probably a half a minute or so so you know without the prop guards you know eight to nine minutes flight time depending on how you, if you're indoors or really open it up outdoors in the wind there's different conditions outdoors that sometimes these little micros or nanos will have a different flight time outside just because you're flying it more aggressively in the wind and stuff like that and here is the control. I really like this control. Let's turn it around so I don't have it upside down. And you have your three speed rates and the yaw does increase a bit, especially in the third rate. It gets quite a bit faster. You got your auto um, emergency 
motor kill here. Hold that in for about a second and it kills the motors. I actually uh, do demonstrate that in my flight review. This is your headless mode for a quick press. A long press is your one key return. And this is your 360 flips in the direction you want to flip. This drone does excellent 360 flips. Gyro calibration is down to the left or right. It says you can do bo I mean, both of them do the exact same thing. So either way, down left or right does your gyro calibration. This is an auto takeoff button here. You can set it on the ground and then go ahead and uh, press that and it'll automatically take off. And this will also automatically land. This is your power button. This is your roll trim and this is your pitch trim here. For the, you know, just trim for the right stick. They had to put it over here because of lack of space. So your auto takeoff here, you can also start to prop by both sticks down and out and then give it throttle. And then of course you can just do the throw and go where you throw it up and motors fire up and then it goes. Be mindful, it gets a lot of altitude when it, as soon as it takes off. So if you're in the house and do this, it may hit the ceiling. You'll see it kind of hit the, my garage door opener and stuff in the garage as I'm doing it because it wants to gain altitude. So if you're doing a flight indoors, you're probably better off doing used to using the auto takeoff here. But outside, you have, you know, the throw and go works really, really well. All right, guys, I think that wraps up the table review portion. Got everything covered here. So let's move along now outside where we're going to fly it in the garage and then a little bit out into the outside. The reason why I didn't fly it outdoors very much, as you'll see in the flight review, is it was really, really, really windy today. And it was too windy to fly this outdoors very much. But I did fly it a little bit outdoors. But again, this drone does right in both indoor out it was too windy today to fly any kind of drone uh, very much outside so let's move along now outside for that flight review okay guys so let's take the vk330 this little foldable micro drone out now for its test flight now i'm going to fly it the majority of the time here in my garage um, this is obviously a, a powerful enough little drone that you can fly it outdoors with no problems typically but it's really really windy today the wind was just gusting there, probably 30 miles an hour. So that's going to be too much for just about any toy drone. But I might fly it here just briefly out over the driveway and back into the garage. But it's just too windy today to fly this guy outdoors. Um, it gets a nice flight time indoors. I would go over nine minutes with a one minute LVC. But you know, in you know, flying it in wind, even a light wind and stuff, I expect aggressively flying in the highest rate. It's going to probably be closer to eight minutes flight time. So let's go ahead here and uh, I'm going to set my controller down here and let's open the arms, fold those out. Make sure they kind of get locked into place. All right, let's go ahead and, and we'll turn it on. And then go ahead here and turn the controller on. Now you do need to have this sitting um, relatively level. So I'm going to sit on the, gr on the ground because it won't want to bind if you're moving it around. So I'll back up, you know, easy to see. Do this binding sequence. Now the lights have gone solid. Now we can do the hand toss because this drone has a hand toss. You can also use the auto takeoff button or you can do both sticks down and out and then throw it up into the, uh, let's throw, both sticks down and out and then give it throttle to take off is what I'm trying to say. Um, the gyro calibration on this is both sticks down to the left or the right. We'll do that because on a few crashes I did need to recalibrate the gyro and there it goes it says you can do down left and right but i mean it's it sounds like it's a gyro calibration either way so we'll go ahead and try the uh, the hand toss but if you do crash this little drone and i'm flying of course with no prop guards too if you fly some prop guards your flight time is going to be reduced by probably at least 30 45 seconds if you put those prop guards on. i don't really i don't like prop guards so indoors probably would have made a little bit more uh, sense but it didn't, again if you do crash this drone it can get a little bit of a of a, dr a drift because of the gyro just land it and recalibrate the gyro so let's go ahead and we'll toss it up here and it does tend to get a lot of altitude you probably noticed there when I throw it it wants to really fly up and that happened to me quite a bit flying indoors with a lower ceiling than this I would hit the ceiling so be mindful that the hand toss is better for outdoors because you're going to hit your ceiling. Okay, that's the lowest rate. Bring it over here and let's show you the uh, middle rate and then the highest rate. You can really see the yaw increase when you get to the high, the highest rate. This 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 drone just flies fantastic. It's 
direct driven props. There is altitude hold, but it doesn't affect the sportiness too much. I'm gonna give it a little bit of left trim there. Well, it just flies wonderful. Let's do some 360 flips here. Show you guys how that worked. You see those rear lights in the back and the white light in the front and the blue eyes. So you got plenty of lights for orientation on this drone. Let's do a flip. If I can get it over here in the view. I know the lighting's not the greatest in here, guys, but it is what it is. It does raise up, you know, as they usually do. Does nice flips. If you're gonna try to fly this guy in the wind, I'd obviously have it in the highest rate like I have it now. I'll fly it out here and bring it back. It's gonna be able to do just fine whenever the wind's not gusting at all. Full gust. You see it's fighting it there, but boy, it's doing pretty darn good for a, a, little, a little micro drone. You look at those trees over there. I mean, it's, it's ripping out there. It's warm too. Warm southerly breeze today. Yeah, this guy, this this drone flies awesome. Let's go ahead and let's do a uh, an auto landing. It always tends to do that when it lands. It almost I've had a few times it somersault. Now I'll show you guys the auto takeoff instead of the hand launch. Just press it and away it goes. And again, you can also do st your sticks down and outboard, and then just give it throttle if you wish to do that. I like the hand toss. But again, it doesn't work really, it's not really good for indoors because it really takes off and gives it a lot of uh, throttle. I think that's just to make sure it stays in the air and doesn't hit the ground. And it, if you're indoors, it's gonna hit your ceiling. As you saw there, it banging into my uh, garage door opener there. I might try to do the hand toss again here in a moment. You could try to do it here just outside the garage. I believe this drone is pretty much just a rebrand of the uh, broad, uh, broad, I forget the, Broadstream, Broadstream S9, I believe. It's, at least the Broadstream is very similar, but I don't think it has the hand toss. So this drone is a little bit different, I believe. So I don't think that one had the hand toss. Uh, the hand toss is a pretty new, pretty new feature in some of these drones. Let's go ahead and do, uh, flew it into me there. Let's go ahead and do an auto landing. Oh, and it, it bounced and it threw a prop. That prop may have been, that prop that flew off may have been the same one. It's got some, I, got, I landed some spider webs last night. That may have been the same prop that flew off of me when I crashed it. Because flying it indoors, I did hit the wall sometimes. Just trying to fly it aggressively in an area that was really too small for that. So let's go out here and let's do a hand toss right here where we can actually not hit it in, into anything. Whoa, there, there it went. Let's try, let's try that again. I'm gonna try to bring it in here and I don't know if the wind caught it or what, I did a somersault. This guy's awesome, I like this drone a lot. Let's make sure that the arms are all snapped into place. That wind is real, it's ripping, man. Let's try it here, I just, let's try the hand toss again. There it goes, even tumbled. That worked really well. I'm gonna bring it back into the garage because it just can't handle, n no drone, especially with brushed motors, is gonna really handle that wind. Even a brushless drone is gonna struggle at times. Almost you have to have a big brushless GPS drone or a racer to be able to really handle any kind of, of wind. Hopefully I'm keeping this in view for you guys. I don't film in our garage and stuff too often so it's easy to end up getting the drone below the camera and you guys are like well heck I can't see it you got it at your feet but well, it's just it's hard to do it when you're filming with the head indoors in a small area but this should give you guys a good idea how this little guy flies it it flies awesome whoa let's do a few more flips it does flips so well it really raises up though in, in, in altitude. So you make sure you're loaded. If you're gonna do flips indoors, be low to the ground so that you don't end up banging into your ceiling. 
you get up about where I am now, it's going to be too high and it's going to hit the ceiling. So. Those little red lights in the rear, I think those may be actually on the battery. This drone is also really nice that it comes with an extra battery and then both batteries go into a dual uh, USB charger. So you can throw both batteries in the charger and then charge it up and then you've got yourself, you know, double the flight time essentially. I'm a big fan of the extra batteries. We're seeing that more and more in some of these drones, especially the ones from Amazon like this one. Couldn't give me a little extra incentives um, with these Amazon drones, extra batteries. The dual charger is just great because that's one of the biggest negatives. You get dual batteries in one charger and then you, you, know, you have to take and charge the battery and then charge the battery again. And then it takes so long. This way you're charging them both in the same amount of time as if you, if you, as if you just had a single charger. So really nice. Well, that orientation lights really help on this drone because these little drones can be easy to lose your orientation if they don't have good lighting to uh, see the front from the rear. You know, the props are all the same colors, but that doesn't always help on these little drones. So these lights, just if it, just the, I mean, look at it, just the blue and the white there in the front. Looks like we may be, I don't know, it's not blinking. I'm not proud of battery power or not, but those, uh, the lights are really just nice and then having that red in the rear is so helpful as well. Let's see, I don't know if it'll take off or not, but that's, I don't want, I'm not gonna hand toss it just in case. I don't have any flashing lights, so let's see if it'll take off here. Yeah, I'm not sure why it came down to the ground. I didn't, I don't think I bumped the auto landing. No, it seems fine. I mean, you always are going to get flashing lights on LVC. I'm not sure. You do have an emergency stop you can use here. I'll show you guys that. Just hold that stop button in and it kills the motors. Obviously, if you're close to the ground, it's no big deal, but you don't do that from really high up. You could obviously bust something. So let's set it down here and rebind it. It's going to just flash like that. There's up and down on the left throttle stick and it's good to go. Let's see if we can do another toss here. I'm just going to toss it low. There we go. Well, see, it really wanted to shoot up to the ceiling. So if you're going to do, if you're going to do the hand toss indoors, throw it, you know, toss it out in front of you really low to the ground. But enough height that it, it has time to activate the motors and the gyro senses it tumbling like that than it in a, an accelerometer, the two working together, I suppose. Since it's this movement and then a gyro, that it's, it's orientation and it realizes it's been tossed and then it, uh, and then it fires up the motor. So now we've hit low voltage. Like I said, I had about a minute low voltage warning yesterday. I was just counting it out in my head so it may not be totally accurate. And the controller also beeps. So you know you're at low voltage and the controller beeps and of course all the LEDs, the red, blue, white, everything's flashing. Be curious what the flight time is on this one, you know, compared to just flying it in the indoors since I did fly it a little bit outdoors. And I was able to, I'm able to fly it more aggressively here in the garage. Or that LVC didn't seem as long as I had indoors. And that could be because indoors I was just kind of going back and forth, back and forth in front of me because it was at low voltage. And here I was able to open it up and still fly around in circles. So I think the LVC is shorter because I'm using, I'm drawing more battery power off this little drone on low voltage, being able to aggressively fly it. So yeah, this is a nice little drone, really good flight time, really, really good flight time indoors. We'll see here. This one was probably going to run closer to eight minutes or something. Hopefully I'll remember to check that in the video, but uh, eight to nine minutes flight time is pretty common on this little guy. Super little flyer. It comes with you know eight extra propellers so two full sets of propellers so if you're like me and you don't want prop guards you may damage one at some point and need to replace it or they could f these little propellers on these micros and nanos they do tend to fly off as we saw there in the video so you can lose one so it's nice they included eight so you've got two extra props for each you know you actually get four extra props depending on the direction that they spin so eight total 
extra propellers. All right, guys, that wraps up the review. Little VK330 micro foldable drone. Really good. I'll have a link to this in the description uh, purchase link if you would like to pick this up. It can't be very expensive. And, uh, and I still don't recall what it, what it costs, but it's, it's, it's well worth it. This is awesome. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, guys, and uh, click the bell so you know when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side. side, 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 side.